In this video, I will walk you through free response question number two from the 2023 AP Calculus exam. This problem is primarily about position, velocity, and acceleration. This is a calculator active problem, so we will use our graphing calculator as needed. Steven swims back and forth along a straight path in a 50 meter long pool for 90 seconds. Steven's velocity is modeled by V of t, which equals this expression where t is measured in seconds and v of t is measured in meters per second. Part A. Find all times t in the interval between 0 and 90 at which Stephen changes direction. Give a reason for your answer. The sign of velocity tells you the direction. For example, if v of t is negative, Stephen is swimming to the left. If v of t is positive, Stephen is swimming to the right. So Stephen changes direction when velocity changes signs. This is a calculator active problem. So our strategy will be to graph the velocity function on the calculator on the interval from 0 to 90 and see where it changes signs. Let's start by typing this equation into the calculator as y1. So go to the calculator, hit y equals, and we're just going to uh, type in the equation right here. So I've typed the velocity function in as y2 actually because on a position velocity acceleration problem I always like to let y1 be position, y2 be velocity, and I save y3 for acceleration. It just helps me to keep it straight. Anyway, we need to graph this on the interval from 0 to 90. So we need to adjust the window. So hit the window button and we will let y min be 0 and what I said y min, x min will be 0, and we will let x max be the 90. I'm not sure what y min and y max should be. By default, y min and y max are set to negative 10 and positive 10, so I'm just going to hit graph and take a look, and we can always adjust it later. Okay, so this actually is not bad. Um, I'm just going to reduce the uh, y min and y max a little bit to zoom in a little bit better. I've changed y min to negative 5 and y max to 5. Let's take a look. Alright, so that gives me a pretty clear picture. I can see that velocity changes signs at whatever this intersection point is right here. Looking back at the equation, we know that velocity at zero will equal zero because if you plug in zero for t, that makes this sine of zero, which is zero, and zero times this is zero. So the velocity at zero is zero. So looking back at the graph, we know that the graph uh, on the left is starting off at zero, zero comma zero, and then it just goes up from there. So there's no um, sign change here. So this intersection point is the only place where velocity changes signs. One way to find the time when velocity changes signs is to use the zero feature on the calculator. Hit second trace and choose option two for zero. It's asking us for a left bound, so just make sure that the pointer is to the left of the zero and hit enter. Now it's asking for a right bound, so use your arrow keys to move the pointer somewhere to the right of the point of intersection and hit enter and then now it's asking for a guess I just like to move the pointer back as close as possible to that point of intersection and hit enter again so the zero is at t equals 56 so the answer is Stephen changes direction at t equals 56 seconds because velocity changes signs. Be sure to mention the units. Before we go on to part B, I wanted to mention another method for finding the x-intercept that some students prefer. It helps you avoid the whole left-bound, right-bound thing that some students don't like. So another thing you can do is graph the x-axis, which is the line y equals 0, by putting a 0 right here. So let's hit graph again. So now, if we want to find this zero, it's the intersection point between the curve 
and this green x-axis. So we can do second trace and choose intersect instead of zero. So I'm choosing five. So this process is a little bit simpler because I won't be doing left bound, right bound. I'm just gonna go kind of close to the point of intersection and I simply hit enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. And there's your 56. Part B, find Stevens acceleration at time t equals 60 seconds. Show the setup for your calculations and indicate units of measure. Is Stevens speeding up or slowing down at time t equals 60 seconds? Give a reason for your answer. First, we need to find Stevens acceleration at time t equals 60 seconds. So that's acceleration at 60. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So we need to find v prime at 60. With a graphing calculator, this is super easy. We need to find the derivative of velocity at 60. To find the derivative, we do math 8. So we're finding the derivative, so d dx. And here we want to put in the velocity. So you have a choice. You can either type in this entire velocity equation, or you can do what I like to do and use the expression y2. Remember that we typed in the velocity equation as y2. So all we really need to do now is get a y2 right here. How do we get it? Hit the vars button and use your arrow key to switch over to y vars. Choose option one for function. And we want y2 because that is velocity. So this means we're taking the derivative of that velocity function. You're welcome to type in the whole thing if you really want to. And we want to evaluate this derivative at t equals 60. So just put 60 right here. And that's it. V prime at 60 is negative 0.036. Don't forget the units. Since velocity was given in meters per second, acceleration will be in meters per second squared. We know that speed increases when velocity and acceleration have the same sign, and speed decreases when velocity and acceleration have opposite signs. We just found the acceleration at 60, and it is negative. So our strategy will be to find the velocity at 60 as well, and see if it has the same sign or the opposite sign. Let's use our graphing calculator to easily evaluate the velocity at time t equals 60. First, we need to adjust one thing. Hit second window to access the table setup menu. I want you to change this setting where it says independent, uh, change it from auto to ask. So now I want to use the table feature of the calculator. So hit second graph to access the table. Now, if we enter a number for X, the table will give us the value of the velocity function, y2, at that number. So to find velocity at 60, all we have to do is type in 60. So the velocity at 60 is negative 0.16. We conclude that Steven is speeding up at t equals 60 seconds because velocity and acceleration are both negative. Make sure you show all of this because this is the setup that they are asking for. Part C, find the distance between Steven's position at time t equals 20 seconds and his position at time t equals 80 seconds. Show the setup for your calculations. The net distance traveled from t equals a to t equals b is called displacement and it's given by the integral of velocity from a to b. So we just need to find the integral of velocity from 20 to 80. Let's use the graphing calculator. To find a definite integral, you do math nine, and we are integrating from 20 to 80. And right here, we need the velocity function. Again, you can type in that whole ugly function, or we can just use y2. 
So I'm going to hit vars, switch over to y vars, hit enter for function, and choose y2 because that's where my velocity function lives. So this is the integral of velocity from 20 to 80, and that's it. 23.383 if you truncate, or 23.384 if you round. So that's it for part C. By the way, in this case, the displacement turned out to be positive, but it could have been a negative number. And if we had gotten a negative number like this, we would have to add on a conclusion like, so the distance between the positions is 23.384 meters. The distance between two positions is always a positive number, so be careful not to write your answer as a negative. Part D. Find the total distance Stephen swims over the interval from 0 to 90 seconds. Show the setup for your calculations. This is very similar to part C where we found the net distance traveled by integrating velocity from A to B. For the total distance traveled, we need to integrate the absolute value of velocity from A to B. So let's use our graphing calculator to find the integral of the absolute value of velocity from 0 to 90. Again, to evaluate a definite integral, we do math 9. We are integrating from 0 to 90. Now we need the absolute value of velocity. For the absolute value function, we need to hit the math button and switch over to the number menu. And right there at the top, that ABS is absolute value. So choose that. So now we need the velocity function in here. Again, instead of typing in the entire thing, let's just use Y2 because that's where we have typed in the velocity function. We can access that by hitting vars, y vars, enter for function, and choose y2. And that's it. Just throw a dx on the end of this, and there you have it. Kabam! I'm going to be real honest with you, that calculation took about 20 seconds. So on the time interval from 0 to 90 seconds, Steven swam a total distance of 62.164 meters.